E3 2019, just as fast as it came, it's already gone. And looking over everything I saw over the past week, I've I've made my opinions. I, I know how I feel about it, and uh, let's get a brief rundown. So, Xbox as a whole this year, I felt like they did some great things with the titles they were showcasing. I mean, they had 60 games, had things like Microsoft Flight Simulator, which I actually think is pretty great. Fantasy Star Online 2, huge announcement coming to the West. Uh, things like that. Cyberpunk with Keanu Reeves, that got people hyped up. I mean, there were a lot of great things going on. I think their biggest weakness of their event this year was just that there was too much talk and trailer without the gameplay. That doesn't really do anything for me. I need gameplay. Otherwise, what's the point? Moving over their Game Pass, that model that's coming up with their, you know, PC Game Pass, Xbox Game Pass, and Xbox Live as a bundle. I think that is a great service. If it's something that, you know, you don't know what games you're going to play, that is the best way to find out which ones you like, and I, I think what they're doing makes a lot of sense. xCloud, streaming to consoles, and, and streaming to handhelds, or whatever you want to have. If it works, it works. The new console, I mean, the, you know, I'm, I'm super disappointed because we didn't get to see any Halo gameplay, or even Gears gameplay for that matter, but putting that aside, the new Xbox sounds interesting, sounds promising. We'll have to wait and see. If that's all we got for Halo this year was how it's related to the new Xbox, well, look forward to playing Halo Legacy on the Project Scarlet. Totally different story when we look at a company like uh, Ubisoft, who I think did a great job this year. Uh, their showcase had a good balance of gameplay and trailers, not too much of one or the other. Things didn't drag on. They had some interesting guests. You know, had John Bernthal come on. You know, when Always Sunny starts kicking up, you don't expect that. But that was, I don't think it belonged to E3, but it's whatever. Uh, and looking at, you know, Watch Dogs Legion, I think that was a great showing. I'm looking forward to playing that, hopefully. Uh, I don't know how well the gameplay will hold up. The thing about Ubisoft is they have a historic track record of uh, making these beautiful vertical slices to showcase at E3. But the whole game does not reflect that quality. Sometimes it does, but usually it doesn't, and uh, it's not the best consumer practice, but I was very intrigued and enthralled, and I wanted to play. I thought to myself, and I said out loud, I want to play this game. So, all in all, Ubisoft, great new IPs. I'm looking forward to Rainbow Six Quarantine. I think you're doing great stuff with Rainbow Six. Terminator stuff, too. Didn't see that coming. It is what it is. Keep it up. Keep doing what you're doing, Ubisoft. I really uh, I felt good about their presentation. Bethesda... Too much focus on dragons. <laughs> I, I know that's what sells. People like Skyrim. People like all that. But enough is enough for me. Like, I don't care that much about the Elder Scrolls. I know it's their big IP. Let me see something else. Okay, Doom. That is something else. Doom looked great. <laughs> really, really into Doom. I, I think that was an awesome showcase. I think we got a lot of fun gameplay out of that. Uh, Rage 2 got some gameplay out of that. I mean, that's already out. But all in all... They did all right. I think uh, Ghostwire Tokyo. That is a big deal, explicitly because of the team working on it. I mean, this is the backbone of people who worked on things like Resident Evil. You know, Shinji Mikami, and then him introducing uh, Ikumi Nakamura. I think it puts her on a, a really good position to to really cement her place as a developer who has really put in the time. I mean. Shinji Mikami is one of the most prolific people in his industry, and I think that often gets overlooked. This is a guy who directed Resident Evil, I mean, has done a ton of great things in the industry. Uh, even Suda51 games, really, if it wasn't for Mikami's influence, might not have, we may never have had a Killer7. So, that's one of those things where, big respect to having him on the stage. They like to say the F word a lot, that's just Bethesda being cool. Whatever. <laughs> All in all, they were fine. I mean, the Doom stuff really was, like, hype and, and exciting, so good job. Uh, PC show, I'll just sum it up briefly by saying much better than previous years, and overall a very good showing of titles. I think they finally found their groove on how to do a PC show properly, and uh, things like... <laughs> dang, I mean, there were a couple of games I thought were pretty interesting to look at. Uh, for one, there was a Man Eater. I like that, the shark game. Uh, Midnight Ghost Hunt, turning Prop Hunt into a full title. Remnant from the Ashes, I'm interested in learning more about that. That seems like a fun adventure game, drop-in, drop-out co-op, having, you know, this kind of semi-horror 
aspect of dealing with these monsters, definitely check out the trailer. Genesis Noir, beautifully stylish. I'm very excited to see what it looks like when you actually play it. And El Hijo, which gave me like a Zelda Wind Waker Forsaken Fortress section where you're sneaking around, but you're instead you're like a little child in Mexico who's been left at the monastery and you want to get out so you could find your mother. I think that's going to be a, a really cool title. So, great job on the PC show. Everybody already knows this, but <laughs> Devolver Digital has the most fun with their E3. I think making a Nintendo Direct parody was excellent. The, the practical and... Yeah, it was really just a lot of practical effects. They, they did great. I hope to see it again because I, I love what they do every year. Uh, even if they didn't announce a whole lot as far as games go, I mean, the games they showcased were cool. Things we know about. The bootleg stuff was pretty funny. Give me more Devolver. So, I mean, aside from that, moving into Square Enix, their show was fine, showcasing Final Fantasy VII. Obviously, it's what people care about. Give us what we want. Uh, get a good look at it. We've seen a lot of the opening sequence at this point, but seeing like some solid, consistent gameplay, having it explained, I think that was great for viewers who are looking forward to the title. I thought it was interesting, too. I, I didn't dislike what I saw, so I'm looking forward to checking that out. Got to see Tifa in action, which is also pretty cool. Uh, a lot of things going right with that. Uh, definitely a step in the right direction. Final Fantasy VIII Remaster, meh. It's, it's not really going to change much about the core experience, so, I mean, if they were doing, like, a more vibrant thing than just remastering that doesn't that's just a buzzword that means we're porting it to a modern console and it runs maybe a little better i don't know uh aside from that we did see final fantasy music is starting to be streamable on like spotify and stuff so that's that's great for fans and i think that's just i mean that's terrific for everybody uh aside from that final fantasy 14 that stuff was pretty crazy i used to subscribe to that game and like i don't even know if i'm looking at the same game anymore other than the character models like Things got wacky, so I don't know. It's, it looks cool. I, I think people are going to have a great time. Uh, Romancing Saga, Scarlet Grey's bringing titles over from Japan that we didn't have. I think that's awesome. Making it available to people in the West, finally, that kind of stuff. Always want to see more of that. Outriders, cool sounding IP, but uh, you didn't show us any actual gameplay. Uh, people can fly. I know what you've done with Bulletstorm. I loved Bulletstorm, so why couldn't you show me what this game looks like and not just as... You know, a video. As uh, my viewer companion, we have uh, my precious Bergmite. You know, I was watching with her and she goes, you know, this is great for your animation reel. And yeah, that's about as good as it gets. Like, this isn't anything to do with gameplay. Oninaki looked like, you know, I'm looking at another Xenoblade. I, whatever. Do your thing, I guess. I, I wasn't too blown away by it. And uh, Avengers, okay, that's, that's fine. I mean, it's not MCU stuff, so I think a lot of people are going to be turned off by it. And I think more people will have fun with the other Avengers game or Marvel-related game that is coming out on a different platform than the Avengers title coming out. But aside from that, decent enough. Uh, Nintendo really brought it home with the best of the best. First and foremost, <laughs> their first announcement, right? This is what I cared about. I thought this was like the coolest reveal, getting the Dragon Quest hero. Hell yeah. Great news for Smash Brothers. Great news for Dragon Quest. More people will check out the series. And I think that's great because Square always has really done a great job of promoting Final Fantasy and ignoring the NX half of their company. So, seeing more Dragon Quest, hopefully we'll get some more ports of these older games, especially featuring the characters that have been brought into the game alongside Eleven's protagonist. I want to see an Erdrick port that's done proper. Things like that. So... Give us Dragon Quest 3 and all the other ones that we didn't get to have unless you want to pay top dollar for a second-hand copy online. Uh, because that's the only way. <sighs> Link's Awakening, that looked pretty much as good as it did last year. The new modes, having the custom dungeons, I think that's cool. I still don't know if this is really worth a $60 purchase, but it's good for people who never played the game before to have a chance to play it on modern hardware. Uh, Trials of Mana, Collections of Mana, the Mana games are very successful very well known so it's great to see more stuff from them even remasters remakes or what have you witcher 3 also big i mean all these different titles what's really special about the nintendo showcase is there's so much gameplay it's not just trailers and teasers it's this is what the game actually plays like that is the most important thing with a video game nintendo actually bothers to do it right thank you Aside from that, Fire Emblem, the cutscenes look like garbage, like hot garbage. Knights of Sidonia on Netflix, garbage. 
Like, the, the frame rate is so bad. And, like, they used to make things like Awakening look good, Path of Radiance looked beautiful, and now here we are in 2019 getting choppy frame rates for modern anime convention nonsense. It sucks. But, you know, the game is fishing in it, so I guess that's cool. Yeah, that'll, that'll be the reason to buy it. Fishing. Aside from that, Witcher 3, great. Resident Evil, it's great to have ports of those games. You know, nobody can ever say they didn't have a chance to play them because now they're available on modern consoles again. No More Heroes 3, for me, that was like one of the big things. I knew it was coming because Suda tweeted about it beforehand, but just boom, 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 all these different announcements, cool things, Panzer Dragoon, Damon X Machina, Astral Chains. I mean, you've got all these titles, Empire of Sin, Ultimate Alliance 3, Contra Rogue Corps, Contra Collection, Sonic and, and Mario and Sonic the Olympic Games, like, just more and more. Got to see Eggman doing his thing. Brilliant! Animal Crossing, delayed, probably one of the worst announcements that they had to share, but I don't mind it so much because they're polishing the game. That's okay. But it did affect their stock numbers pretty significantly. And, of course, Pokemon, also a pretty big announcement with them not bringing all the Pokemon back for the new generation. Probably not something you should have announced so upfront so soon. At least not with better positioning, because it had caused a little bit of a backlash. But aside from that, closing things out, Banjo-Kazooie. Banjo-Kazooie reveal beautifully handled, excellent showcase. All in all, Nintendo did great, and then moving right into the Nintendo Treehouse, it's what they do best. This is really what makes Nintendo the best at E3, because they showcase so much hands-on gameplay and developer dialogue that others just don't have. So... This is this is it. Like this is Nintendo doing what E3 should be all about. And while the other channels that are online are available, you know, GameSpot, IGN, and what have you, are out there doing interviews, the YouTube, you know, E3 Coliseum, a lot of them are just talking about things that don't have games to show yet. You know, there's so much developer dialogue without showing the game they're talking about, and like it really hampers the experience. It's like, wow, this sounds so cool on paper. But can I see what it actually looks like? A lot of games just aren't ready. I'm immensely disappointed with Microsoft Showcase for Gears in their press conference. Maybe they did have more that you could see on the show floor, but I'm not there. So that really sucked for me as a viewer. Um, thinking about other things like that, I mean, E3's, you know, the YouTube Jeff Keighley show that they used to do, it, it's the same show, but I, I felt like they did more with it in the past. So I, I was a bit let down this year, and I think, like, even Jeff probably wasn't having the best time of E3 compared to previous years where it looked like he was having more fun. So, all in all, the the key is the Nintendo Showcase, I mean, having gameplay, because, you know, you might get a second of, of Showcase on another channel, but when you've got, like, non-stop gameplay back-to-back -back with these titles that people are anticipating in the next year, that's how you do it. And there's one game I haven't mentioned at all, but is actually my E3 game of show, that's Luigi's Mansion 3. That looks fantastic. Local co-op, tons of fun, slamming ghosts on the ground, Luigi being Luigi, Gooigi. It's going to be a fun time. It's got plenty of what made the first Luigi look, first Luigi's Mansion look amazing. And I feel like we're going to finally get that again. So hopefully we can uh, catch lightning in a bottle or ghosts in a poltergust or whatever have. You know, <laughs> I, I want more Luigi's Mansion 3 and the gameplay they showcased only affirmed that. So... Yeah, I mean, when it comes down to it, even something like uh, Sakuna of Rice and Ruin, like, that was an unexpected indie title that I'm glad I got to see hands-on. Because now, I want it. All in all, that's my take on E3. I think that, you know, who won? I mean, I've been mentioning Nintendo because of the gameplay. I felt like Ubisoft brought a lot to showcase as well, and I'm really happy with what they showed. So, I mean, I, I like to give them credit where it's due. Like, they did great things this year. I think Sony not being there didn't matter at all. I don't think it matters even a little bit. They wouldn't have had anything to showcase, right? There, All these publishers that are putting their console titles on multi-platform or on the Microsoft stage. So, like, it doesn't matter what Sony would have shown at their press conference because all they want to focus on now are these, like, individual... We'll release one new major title a year. That'll be cool. Okay, great. Well, in the meantime, you know, rely on these third parties to put out titles for you because... Being a PlayStation owner right now, it sucks. I don't have a great time. I, I, don't, I rarely ever use my PS4, and uh, that's just how it is. can say the opposite with the Nintendo Switch. I use it a lot. So, 
Do the math. I mean, Sony didn't really miss you. Maybe you'll have something cool to show in the future. I won't hold my breath. I think that in the future we're looking at a very another paradigm shift of who's on top. And seeing Microsoft and Nintendo working together is so cool. A big thing also at E3 was this games as a service model with you know Game Pass and Uplay Plus and Stadia. All these things. There's a lot going on. So, I mean, this is kind of reshaping the video game industry into being more like a Netflix, right? Where you don't buy your games, you instead, like, stream them and or pick them from a catalog but don't own them because they're a service, not a product. That's not for everyone, but for some, it's great. I like to own games myself. I still like to buy physical when I can, so... I don't make use of that unless there are certain titles where it's like, yeah, I don't need to buy it, but I don't mind spending $15 for a month to play a bunch of titles. So that's kind of where you'd balance it. But because we're getting so many of them, I'm kind of concerned about bloat, about having the problem that you have now when like Netflix has this show and Hulu has this show and, you know, all these different streaming platforms, even anime like Crunchyroll and Funimation, like different streaming services, you don't have access to everything that's out. So the more you have to pay, like purchase to be able to play all these different games, the more it stops being worth it. But that's just kind of my takeaway. All in all, I'm curious about what you, the viewer here, uh, thought about E3. What caught your eye the most? What you were most excited about? What you're disappointed that you didn't hear about? I mean, I always want more Pikmin news, but no such luck for me. It's whatever. Yeah, so tell me in the comments, like, let me know what you were interested in this year, or what you wanted to see more of. Either way, I'm looking forward to reading those, and as always, I'm StanPy. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment, like I said, and as always, I can't wait to see you again, right? I really appreciate you sitting and uh, listening to me ramble about E3. It was a fun year, uh, I had a great time watching it, as I always do, and I'm looking forward to more E3s in the future. Hopefully they do not get cancelled within the next year or two, and stop happening altogether. So it goes. Until next time, keep on playing, keep on telling me what you're enjoying, and adi adi arrivederci. I'll see you next time.